Okay, in this video I'm going to start using some trigonometric identities to evaluate expressions. So basically I'm going to find numerical values by using trigonometric identities. Probably a good chance I'm going to break this up into two parts, but just so you know, here's the questions I'm going to do. So the first one I'm going to evaluate sine of 75 degrees by either using a sum or difference identity. The second one, I'm going to evaluate tangent of pi over 12 by either using a sum or difference identity. I'll probably do 1 and 2 in the first video. I'll do 3 and 4 in the next video. And then uh, question 3, I'm going to evaluate cosine of pi over 12 using a half angle identity. And then the last one, we have that we're given that sine of theta equals 0 0.6820. Theta is in quadrant 1. We're going to find cosine of theta over 2. So the first three I can do without a calculator by knowing the unit circle, which is what I'm going to refer to um, here a little bit. So I went ahead and kind of jotted that down to save us a second. The last one, number four, I am going to use a calculator on, just so you know. All right, so, and, you know, the way I'm doing these, there's certainly different ways to do them, so I don't want you to think the way I'm doing them is, is the only possible way, but it's certainly certainly a way to, to figure them out. So, okay, so we're going to figure out sine of 75 degrees to start with. So again, I want to use a sum or difference identity, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, 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 the sum identity, and I'm thinking, okay, again, you know, I know, you know, sine of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, multiples of all those. I don't know sine of 75 degrees right off the top of my head. And what I want to do though is I want to write 75 degrees as either a sum or difference of degree values that I am familiar with. So again, I, I said I'm going to use a sum identity. Well, I can write sine of 75 degrees as sine of, well, 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, right? 30 and 45 gives you 75. And again, I know sine of 30 degrees and sine of 45 degrees. Now, we have to be careful. We have to uh, make sure we know our identity. So the identity says that if you have sine of x plus y, so sine of something plus something, it says what we get is we have sine of x multiplied by cosine of y plus cosine of x times sine of y. So in this case, my 30 degrees, that's going to be my x value. And my 45 degrees, that's going to be my y value. So we can write sine of 30 degrees plus sine of 45 degrees. We can write that as sine of, well, 30 degrees. We'll multiply that by cosine of 45 degrees plus then we'll have cosine of 30 degrees multiplied by sine of 45 degrees. So now it's just a matter of, you know, using the good old unit circle. So let's see if I can fit everything in here. So sine of 30 degrees, I find the angle that corresponds to 30 degrees. Sine is the y value, so sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Then I've got to find cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees, well again I find the angle corresponding to 45 degrees. Cosine is represented by the x coordinate on the unit circle. That'll be the square root of 2 over 2. And then likewise cosine of 30 degrees, okay, that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And then sine of 45 degrees is again going to be the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so what do we get here if we simplify? Well, if we multiply across the top, we'll have the square root of 2. 2 times 2 will give us 4. Again, for our second term, the denominator will be 2 times 2, or 4. We have the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. We can write that as the square root of 3 times 2. So we've got the square root of 2 over 4 plus, well, we'll have the square root of 6 over 4. And if you want to, we can always write that as a single fraction. We can just write that as the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 over 4. And at that point, I would stop. There's not really much more simplification that you can do to that. So, so that would be the solution for the, the, the first question there. All right, let's, uh, 
Let's figure out the value for tangent of pi over 12. This one's a little bit harder to me just because, you know, I'm dealing with, to me it's kind of easy. The first one was a little bit easier. It's, it's easy to see that, it's easier to see that 75 degrees is, hey, uh, you know, 30 plus 45. I'm trying to either add, you know, some multiples of pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, or subtract those to get pi over 12. And this may take you a little bit of, of trial and error. But notice if we do pi over 4 minus pi over 6, well, we can get common denominators, multiply top and bottom of the first one by 3. That will give us 3 pi over 12. Minus will uh, multiply top and bottom of the second fraction by 2. That will give us 2 pi over 12. 3 pi minus 2 pi will leave us with just 1 pi over 12. So what that says is, it says, well, we can write tangent of pi over 12 as tangent of pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Okay, so to me that's not immediately obvious. Again, that's something that, that uh, you know, I, I looked at this problem before I made the video and I made sure, hey, th that was my first guess. You know, I figured it's going to be something small, um, but I wasn't, it wa I wa wasn't immediately um, positive that that would work, but it seemed like a good guess and hey, in fact, it did work. Okay, so, so just like before, we're going to have to use an identity. Uh, the difference ident identity for tangent. And that says if you have tangent of x minus y, well, in this case, you have tangent of x minus tangent of y, and that's being all divided by 1 plus tangent of x multiplied by tangent of y. So again, just like before, um, in this case, the pi over 4, that's going to be our x value. The pi over 6 is going to be the y value in the identity. So when we simplify, it says that tangent of pi over 4 minus pi over 6, that's going to give us tangent of pi over 4 minus tangent of pi over 6 divided by 1 plus tangent of pi over 4 multiplied by tangent of pi over 6. Alrighty, so now we've got to figure out the value of tangent of pi over 4 and tangent of pi over 6. Well, maybe let's do that off to the side again real quick. So tangent, remember, tangent of an angle, is, so tangent of theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. So for example, tangent of pi over 4 well, tangent of pi over 4, again, I find the point on the unit circle that goes with pi over 4. And in this case, it's, well, it would be sine of pi over 4 divided by cosine of pi over 4. Well, both of those values, we have the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. If you take any number and divide it by itself, you get exactly 1. So tangent of pi over 4 is just equal to 1. And likewise, if we do tangent of pi over 6, I find the, the point on the unit circle that corresponds to pi over 6. So again, we do sine divided by cosine, or equivalently, the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So we'll have 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Well, if you take one fraction and divide it by another, but you leave the top fraction alone, we flip and multiply the, uh, the denominator. Okay, so we'll have 1 half multiplied, again we're flipping the denominator, so we'll have 2 over root 3. Well, we can cancel, that leaves us with 1 over the square root of 3. Lots of people uh, like to see the denominators rationalized. So to me, I always said, you know, hey, 1 over root 3, that's fine, work with it. But if you, a lot of teachers want to see the denominator rationalized. So what we can do is we can multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Right, because really you're just multiplying by the number 1, so we're not changing the value, just how it looks. So that'll leave us with square root of 3 on top. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3, you can think about, well, that gives me the square root of 9, or equivalently, just 3. So okay, so now we've got our values. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 divided by 3. And let's see how much simplification we have to do. Okay, so we've got 1 minus, we said tangent of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 
over 3 divided by 1 plus, okay, so again, we said tangent of pi over 4, that's 1, tangent of pi over 6, that's the square root of 3 over 3. So let's see, we've got 1 minus the square root of 3 over 3 in the numerator, and in the denominator, we're just going to have 1 plus the square root of 3 over 3. So again, um, just kind of more algebra simplification in this case. Um, sunlight starting to creep into my video here at the bottom. Let me move out a little bit. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do to simplify this fraction now is, um, if you think about writing 1 as 1 over 1, 1 over 1, I want to get rid of the, the, the fractions, the denominators. So what I can do is I can multiply the numerator by 3, and so equivalently, I have to multiply the denominator by 3. Now, if we do that, we have to distribute. So 3 times 1 will give us 3. Minus, well, if we multiply, if we distribute to the second term, the 3's will cancel out, and we'll just be left with the square root of 3. And then the denominator, we'll have 3 times 1, which is 3. And again, if we distribute, the, the 3's will cancel out, leaving us with just simply the square root of 3. And at this point, to me, again, you could stop here, um, but let's just be really picky. Suppose, again, you had somebody that wanted you to rationalize the denominator. So in this case, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. It's the never-ending problem. Um, and, you know, these are, this, is, this to me is what makes math difficult. A lot of times, you know, it's just, it's just lots of little things you have to remember and keep doing. Um, but that's the nature of the beast. So the conjugate, remember, if you have two terms, all you do is change the sign in the middle. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by 3 minus the square root of 3. But again, if you multiply the denominator of a fraction by something, you have to do the same thing to the numerator. And again, let's just see what happens. Now we have to foil it out or do a lot of distributing. So 3 times 3 will give us 9. 3 times negative square root of 3 will give us a minus 3 root 3. We'll have another minus 3 root 3 when we multiply on the inside. Negative times a negative will give us a positive. Root 3 times root 3 will give us 3. In the denominator, we'll have 3 times 3, which is 9. We'll have a, uh, if we do 3 times negative root 3, we'll have negative 3 root 3. On the inside, we're going to get a positive 3 root 3. And that's the whole point of multiplying by the conjugate, is these two terms are going to cancel out. Let's finish it out, though, first. We've got a positive times a negative, which is a negative. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Okay, so we're almost there. So we've got 9 plus 3, which is 12. We have negative 3 root 3 minus 3 root 3, that's minus 6 times the square root of 3. In the denominator, again, our radicals will just cancel out the terms involving the radicals. We have 9 minus 3, which is 6. Oh, hey, we can always simplify this a little bit more. Um, we can write that as 12 over 6 minus 6 root 3 over 6. 12 over 6 will give you 2. Here the 6's will just cancel out, so we'll be left with the square root of 3. Whew, long problem. Okay, lots of little steps there. So lots of little things to, to remember. So, all right, so that was problem 1 and 2. I'm going to finish out number 3 and 4 in another video. I think those uh, 3 and 4 should both definitely be a little shorter than number 2. So... All right, I hope this makes some sense. Again, it's just a lot of identities that you have to remember, and it's just sort of manipulating those. Um, and where you would have to stop on these problems, like I said, it kind of depends on your instructor or your teacher, how much they want you to simplify it. Again, it's very common for people to rationalize the denominator. So, you know, this is certainly, to me, a, a kind of a, a, a much cleaner looking answer, say, than you know, that part, when we actually filled in the values. It looks a lot nicer. So, all right, so um, if you want to see the, the other two examples, just stick around, and I'll put a link in the video description so you can easily find uh, part two, which will contain questions three and four.